Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Ellie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today's guest, Anne Hessian, is not your usual medical intuitive and energy healer. You are in for a very sweet treat. Now, before jumping in, I've got a question for you. As an epic adventure seeker, and I know that you wouldn't be listening unless you were seeking epic adventures, you may be looking for some guidance on your spiritual path. I made a quick guide to lay out some basics to get you started, to clarify, to enlighten, enlighten your journey. It's your first steps on your spiritual path. It includes defining your spirituality, spiritual aspects of creating your reality, and different aspects that will guide you. So you have some groundwork, some place to go, and you will find the link to download that gift in the show notes. Anne Hessian sees and knows. The better word is intuits things about others and that allows her to move people away from being stuck and into true healing a rarity in this field she uniquely shows healers how to transform their relationship to sales and to business and basically eliminates the seeming allergy to sales that so many of us in the healing arts experience and I, I know I was there for a long time. Her skills are much needed today as more people are awakening to alternative methods of moving their lives to happier, healthier places. When she's not helping healers and solopreneurs, and I love that term, solopreneurs, transform their inner game and discover how selling can be aligned and powerful as their healing work, she's most often found reveling in her flower garden in the summer, reading a good mystery in her hot tub in the winter or traveling somewhere beautiful to continue her personal and professional growth. That's because she learned from her mom that learning and experiencing something new every day keeps your mind and your heart young, vibrant, and alive for possibility. And you're going to witness that in Anne. Immediately, so I feel so honored to welcome you to our show, and I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be here. And I have to tell you, oh my God, you just got me because I started crying because of my mom. <laughs> you know, the people you love, uh -huh. they just grab your heart every once in a while. I lost, I mean, I lost my mom a few years ago, and um. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> no. And it's 100% the truth. Like she, my mom was, she's a lifelong learner and that she, she instilled that in me as yeah, something I'll always be grateful to her for. Yeah, but <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> it's so cool. How do you create that in your, like, I'm a very inquisitive person. I'm discovering something every day, but I never framed it quite like that. So how do you, I guess it's a habit you grew up with. You don't have to go out of your way to do it. Yeah, I feel like really blessed in um, that I grew up, both my parents were really awesome people and, and lifelong learners. And so they, they really did. I think they just instilled that in me, right? They just, that it's um, my mom right up until, um, you know, the last few years, her short-term memory was, you know, kind of shot. So it was a little different, but up until then, like every single time, you know, in her eighties, I would talk with her and, you know, I'd call her on the phone and she'd always have, oh, you'll never guess what I learned today. But <laughs> like every single time she just had that approach to life. And I do think that's what keeps you young as much as uh, anything else. That's cool. I, yeah. 
I raised my kids in the DC area. So we had all the Smithsonian museums mm -hmm. and the private museums. And I've always been an art lover. So mm -hmm. at one point, my son, he must have been about four years old. He said, mom, can we stop going to museums now? <laughs> And he himself, he's a musician, he travels all over the world, and he always goes to whatever museum is. I went to uh, Storm King with him, which is this most magnificent outdoor, their sculptures, you gotta go there, it's in Cornwall, New York. And he knew just as much as the docent leading the tour, and I was like, that's, wow. that's cool, because I, I did instill the love of art in him. So now his sister didn't quite join in that love, but your kids are all gonna, each one's gonna be different. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. <laughs> right off the love put it to my mom. <laughs> That's cool. But my mom had to work all the time because of our circumstances. But man, when she retired, she was forever going to the library and reading book after book after book and mm -hmm. getting out in the world and having fun because she never had a chance to have fun when I was growing up. So that was cool. That's wonderful. So she was discovering things too. I think when we honor our moms, we really get the picture of what they did for us that maybe we didn't get when we were growing up. But, so... I first heard about you in some program where mm -hmm. I wanted to learn how to be visible as a healthcare practitioner. And mm -hmm. everybody I talked to said, you have to talk to Ann Hessian, you have to talk to Ann Hessian, you have to talk to Ann Hessian. And so I did. You are the person who's visible. And I wonder what drove you, what motivated you to be that person? Well, I'd, you know, I, I would say that I'm, I, I have a certain amount of visibility as a healer. You know, I did build a really, I am an energy healer. I'm a medical intuitive. Um, I, at one point had built a six figure energy healing practice. I don't, not that as busy with that anymore because I'm more focused on helping other healers. Right. But I still have that. And um, so I still have visibility there, but where I'm most visible um, is how is as someone who helps other healers to to create visibility to create an actual business doing what they do and i'm very committed to that and to be and to including i'm actually committed to being visible not just to like the, the end result i want is you know tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of healers who are empowered to go out and and you know change the world because the world needs healers really really needs healers badly and healers very often can't kind of can't get out of their own way around the business side of things, right? And so that's, I am very, very passionate and committed to that. And I want to um, continue to grow into more and more of being the person who can help them with that. And I, I'm super passionate about that. And part of that is that willingness to be visible. It's actually one of the things that I work with people about a lot because most healers are terrified to be visible. Oh, most healers are really terrified to be visible. I it's I know that. Well, and I and, and you may be an exception, right? Or you may have gotten to where you're not, you to where you're an exception. But most healers are, um, they're scared to be known for doing what they do. They're afraid of, you know, repercussions. They're afraid of people. People won't get it. People will say it's too woo. People will reject me. People will say it's this, that, and the other. Um, and so it's actually one of the things that I work, I help people work with, because when I work with them, I teach them the nuts and bolts around their business, but we also do the healing work, the inner work, right? Wow. And the visibility is one of the biggest blocks that most healers have. Um, I think it's in our DNA. I think, you know, we're the great, 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 whatever granddaughters and grandsons of the midwives who got hung or burned at the stake because they knew something about herbs, <laughs> right? I mean, and it's that trauma is still there. Um, fortunately, it can be cleared because we're healers and we're going to have to do that. <laughs> right? But visibility uh, is actually one of the biggest things that's blocking healers, fears of visibility. That's amazing. It's... <laughs> 
Uh, oh, and I first started the energy work. Oh, well, let me go here first. Yeah. I know for myself and for many, all my mentors who taught me different modalities, mm -hmm. they got into that work to heal themselves when the medical community couldn't heal them from an yeah. accident and injury. And, and I wondered if that was your experience. Um. Not, not so much. I mean, I, I don't have one of those dramatic stories <laughs> that some people have, right? Um, I, partly probably because I, I, was, I was very fortunate and blessed to be introduced to alternative approaches to healing, um, you know, really paying attention to nutrition, and, including energetic and the power of, you know, deep energetic healing at a pretty young age, like in my 20s. And so, and I just was fascinated. I was, you know, so even though I didn't have any like really significant health concern, uh, the whole idea fascinated me. And so I, I like to think I probably preempted some things that might've come down, might've come down the pike <laughs> if I hadn't, but, um, but I have certainly worked with a lot of people for whom that's the case. Like they, um, so, you know, again, I, I work mostly with healers who really want to have a business doing their healing work. Um, which isn't everyone. Some people, they, they just want to do it as a side thing. But if they really want to have a business of it, that's who I'm, I'm really here to help. And many of them, um, it, the, what the modality or modalities that they've found, it's, they are so passionate about them because in some cases it literally saved their life. It certainly transformed their life. And in some cases it literally, so it's a, it's a fairly common thing. Yeah. that that's when people come to the healing stuff and that's where I came from so <laughs> there's no question about that for me and I know when I first started working with energy it never occurred to me to charge anybody I was just treating everybody and I remember I went to a lot of T. Harvecker programs mm -hmm. and he'd have he'd say the group over there I don't remember the term he is. It was a spiritual group. He said, they're the ones who don't believe in money. Mm -hmm. And when I started charging, I was not charging very much. And then I realized, mm -hmm. man, it takes a lot of energy to do what I do. So I, I charge a lot more now. I can't wait for your program because I'm going to be jumping into it. I'm just wondering how many people in your field went to Harvard? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm the only one, but yeah, I do. I do. I did go to Harvard. Um, and uh, I studied psychology when I was there, which was a, a long time ago. Um, but you know, that's actually, it's kind of part of my, it's a bit of my story of how I got here. So I did, I, I've, I would say I've always been fascinated by like, what makes people tick, you know, like, why do we do what we do? And what's, what's, you know, and, and so studying psychology was sort of the closest thing to, to that. Um, so that is what I, that was what I majored in. Um, but I, I remember I was very clear, I wasn't going to continue and do like graduate work in it or become a psychologist. Cause it just didn't, but I couldn't have articulated back then. Like why I just knew I was like, I don't think I want to do that. And right around the time I was graduating is when I started to learn more about sort of more alternative stuff. My brother, so my brother had the story. My brother had knees that were so messed up from soccer and a car accident that he got to where he almost couldn't walk in his early twenties. Wow. And he, you know, he got connected with like a rolfer and then some other, you know, kind of led, you know, down the road, right? That was how he said that, the alternative health road, you go to this, and then they tell you about this person. Thing. And he started to learn about some, a really powerful um, form of energetic healing called body electronics, which I don't think anyone's really teaching anymore, but he ended up going to Maui studying and doing it there he by the way uh, just in terms of a cool healing story so he had both of the cartilage in both knees was just completely shot and he really he like literally could not run and could had trouble walking he had the cartilage removed in one knee with surgery didn't really help that much he's like there's got to be a better way he was talking to the surgeon and was like why can't i regrow the cartilage and the surgeon said like you just can't and you just don't say stuff like that to my brother <laughs> <laughs> he's like you must be able to, your body built it, right? And so that kind of led him to the journey. And by the way, in the process of his healing journey, he completely healed both knees, 
regrew the cartilage. He's been examined by like orthopedic surgeons who are like, there's nothing wrong with your knees. There's absolutely nothing. So don't believe them when they tell you, you can't do that. I'm not saying it's easy, right. but you can, you can do it. Right. So that's, so I kind of slid in on my brother's life-changing story. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I, I ended up moving to Maui. This is like my early mid twenties. And, um, was learning all this amazing, powerful, like a life-changing, very, you know, spiritually uh, rich time of my life and changed my life in so many ways. I could talk for hours about it. But there's one particular thing. I happened to pick up, like I was at a friend's house and I saw he had this little book and I just kind of picked it up. And it was a series of lectures by this Russian philosopher named um, P.D. Uspensky. Now, I've actually never studied philosophy. It's probably, it was like the first and last time in my life I picked up a philosophy book, right? To a bit of light reading. But it was a series of lectures and I started reading it and it changed my life. It changed my life. You know, sometimes you just come across something. So he was writing about the field of psychology back in the 30s, okay? So if you, anyone who's listening, if you study psychology in the 30s, you're, there's still some Freud, but it's like, you're talking B.F. Skinner, behaviorism, stimulus response. B.S. Skinner was still alive when I was at Harvard, by the way. I actually got to hear him lecture. Wow. That. Yeah, that was wild. He was a professor emeritus and um, I went and heard, heard him give a lecture. So that was pretty, a bit of history. Um, so, but what Uspensky in his thirties was wrote, what he wrote about psychology just resonated for me so strongly. What he said was, and I'll paraphrase, he said, the problem with the field of psychology is that it's entirely concerned with what is and not at all with what's possible. Oh, yeah. And I was like, wow. that, you know, like, yeah. right? right? I was like, that's why, that's why I didn't continue. Yeah. Because my life is about what's possible. That is truly like, if you're gonna sum up my life, my life is all about what is possible, what's possible for me and for you and for, uh, he, uh, uh, our species, like what's possible for homo sapiens? When, what more can we become? That's what my life is about. And that, you know, just that thing from Luspensky, it just crystallized it for me. That's amazing. I'm surprised that I was a mainstream psychologist uh, <laughs> before I got attacked and hurt and changed my whole life. So, uh, I want to pursue that a little more. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break. You got to ask questions. And I wrote this book uh, some years ago. You got to ask questions how to be happy, healthy, and secure. And at the time, I sold this book for $97 because you need to talk to yourself. You need to find out why is your world doing this? What can I do? How can I change it? And that's a big thing if you follow me, you know. So what I did was, no, I don't charge 97 for it anymore. In fact, I also made the audio book and I have it as a gift set, the book and the audio book at a very special price. And you'll find it in the show notes. So I, I love all these terms that you use and the uh, they're constructs that I explain the clients, but you created a vocabulary. And it's like, this makes sense. So I'm um, going toward the body sapiens. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, that's that's like the, for the healing side of my business. That's what I call it, which because sapiens is just a word for wisdom. That's so what I figured. And I was also extremely impressed that you create a facility with 20 plus practitioners because I was scheduled to be part of one. Mm -hmm. And when the big doctor, the MD, backed mm -hmm. out, the whole thing fell apart. Yeah, and it's a tough business. I, I didn't actually create it, but I was the director of it for a while. And wow. it, was a, it was a wonderful place, an incredible community. It's a tough business model though. It's, a t it's tough to come up with a, the, a way to have alternative and a large alternative practitioner and a large center. Um, so it was it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> I will say that. Um, so some of the most uh, one of the most fun work experiences I've ever had was working there. It's a really important thing because it's what got me started on my healing path when I was having trouble functioning. It was mm. a small 
I don't know if it was a co-op, but there were like three or four practitioners. They each did something different. So I went from one to the next to the next. Yeah. And they all knew somebody else to go to see this. If it hadn't been for that, I, I probably wouldn't be here today. So that's a powerful thing to do and to be part of. Yeah, it, it very much was. It was a wonderful experience. I know that I clear emotions and I go through the whole history. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that my listeners know what the term trapped emotions mm -hmm. means. Would you explain that? Because clearly sure. that's key to healing anything. Sure. So that particular term, you know, there's some more, a more generic term would be emotional baggage. <laughs> okay. Um, that I think we all just get like there's, and you can feel it like, wait, like baggage you're carrying around. The specific term trapped emotions comes from um, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who created the emotion code and um, highly, highly, highly recommend that the, the book, the emotion code and the training that he offers through his company, Discovered Healings. So I've known him for quite a few years, an amazing, amazing guy um, who's uh, helping to helping to change the world by, you know, training healers and helping people do this. But so here's how I would explain a trapped emotion. Um, emotions are a physical body phenomenon. It is your physical body that generates an emotion. Okay. So there's chemical changes and there's an energy and it has a certain resonance and the resonance of anger is different than the resonance of abandonment. And it's different than the resonance of grief and it's different than the resonance of helplessness, right? So each emotion has its own sort of has its own resonance. So your body generates that energy. And then ideally your body then processes that energy that it just created. And then that's not a trapped emotion. That's just an emotion, <laughs> right? Where it becomes a trapped emotion is when your body doesn't process it. Your body generates it. It doesn't process it. And what seems to happen is that energy, that energy that's still there in that frequency, it'll kind of coalesce down into a, a ball of energy. And some people can actually see them and it'll be located in your body or it could be kind of like in your energy field. Um, so that's, a, that's what a trapped emotion is and the emotion code, which is one of the modalities that I, um, that I do, um, and use with my healing clients and also with my healer clients, um, is, uh, it's a very, very simple method of identifying and then just clearing gone, done, finally processed would be another way to think of it. Um, those trapped emotions and most people have hundreds, if not more than hundreds of trapped emotions. Oh, definitely. Really powerful. Very, very powerful work and very simple. And uh, something that you point, I, I watched your videos. I, I went every place I could find your name. <laughs> uh, the, and I do it too, because you also have uh, emotions in you. They're not yours, but they're yes. in you. And some of them are inherited and some of them are constructed. And you want to work with somebody who knows how to, get rid of all of them because they'll yeah, keep you stuck yeah. whether or not they're yours yeah you, you can absorb them from other people and some people are much more prone to doing that than others yeah. right so they're more i don't think if you're so the term empath is thrown out or thrown out a lot nowadays um and i i, I think you can be an empath without absorbing right you can just sort of feel uh -huh. what someone else is feeling and not absorb but but however um, very often uh, people who are naturally empaths or empathetics are absorbing. I, I like to make the distinction though, because it, it doesn't have to be that way. You can be um, an empath and have the kind of shields and have the, have the boundaries in place so that you're not absorbing. And in fact, it's very important for you to learn how to do that because um, otherwise you are going to be taking on a lot of other people's energy. Um, and you can also um, inherit them. You can inherit a trapped emotion and other imbalances um, at, right at conception. Just like you inherit your DNA at conception, you can inherit that. Sometimes they go back many generations, many, many, many generations that it's been passed along. And the whole miasmic thing of behavior patterns that get yes. passed along. Absolutely. It's a, it's quite a, quite a thing. It's quite a weight we carry. With all this stuff. Although I always like to remind ourselves that we also inherit a lot of good stuff too. Oh, absolutely. Yes. 
I was with a friend who was highly empathic. We were mm -hmm. in a juice bar and all of a sudden she had this horrible headache. She said, the guy who just came in has a migraine headache and she was feeling it. So. Yeah, and that's that's unpleasant and I think dangerous actually, like that you really need to, whether you can sort out yourself or work with someone to help you manage that so that you don't end up taking on all that next. It'll, it'll make you old before your time. We all have an all of an ever uh, plenty of our own stuff to do <laughs> without having to take on other people's stuff too. So. I, I was that way when I was younger, and at one point I said, "I don't want to have this anymore." And I just asked the universe, "Please take it away from me." So now I get messages, but I'm not taking on anybody's feelings yep. anymore. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's one message that you really really want to leave with our listeners today because you obviously have so much wisdom so much experience and so much love to make a difference oh gosh there's so many things <laughs> that i could share but i think you know the fundamental thing i i just want everyone to know is that especially healers because that's really who my passion is for um and healers are, are uh, very powerful people. They're the alchemists of the world. You know, the healers are turn trauma into power. You know, that's our that's our gift, is that we can actually make that that transformation for ourselves and for the world. And um, so that's really who I'm here to serve. And um, so often healers are. Uh, it's like they have these amazing gifts, but they also have their own special set of challenges. And the visibility thing that we talked about, again, that's super, super common, sometimes absolutely terrified. Like literally you're, you're like, I want to be out there. I want to, I love helping people. I want to have a business. I want to be out there. But then your old part of your brain with all that stuff is like, but they'll kill you. Right. And so then you're like, no, I can't. Right. And so people we get caught in that. So the visibility and a lot of self-doubt and self-worth issues are often there, right? And a lot of times, um, another really common one for that for healers, not everyone, but for a lot of healers is this belief um, that it's not okay to charge for what they do, or it's not okay to be paid well for what they do. So there's a lot of stuff around money. Healers as a group tend to have money issues, <laughs> right? Um, and so for all those things and more can really hold them back. And I think the thing that I, I want to um, leave people with is um, that what you do as if you're a healer, what you do really matters. It really matters. And people need you. People are waiting for you. Right. And so those things that are in the way that are holding you back, that are making it more challenging don't let them right find that find the support that you need whether it's working with a coach or you know getting getting more stuff cleared or working with someone like me who's like who's here who's done it right and wants to help you do it too like don't let that hold you back because what you do is way too important thank you thank you thank you for being you for doing that because like I said I can't wait for you to teach that again because mm -hmm. I, I increased my prices dramatically because I looked at them and I said heck I'm using so much energy doing this the client's getting life-changing results it doesn't make sense for me to not mm -hmm. get what I'm earning and I mentioned it to a, a friend who was a coach and she was in shock because she was charging like one tenth, and I thought, how can you do your work for that much? So, so you're very much needed. That program's very much needed, and I'll be sure that we have um, all your links in the show notes so people can find you. And I know you have a gift to share today. I do, I do, and this is a um, again. It's really it's for. Healers, it can also be people who don't necessarily identify as a healer. Maybe they're more of a coach, but you're, you know, a heart-centered um, person who's here to serve and you want to have a business. You want to be able to have clients and, and be paid for what you do and feel good about it. And one of the things that for most people like that is that they tend to be what I call allergic to sales, right? It's just like the sales seems like the worst thing in the world to have to do. And it doesn't have to be that way. 
right? The way that I do sales and, the, and I do, I mean, I, I literally, I used to hate sales. It used to make me nauseous. And I went through a whole journey, which I won't go into here, <laughs> right? But where I really was able to work past that and find a way to do sales that it comes from the soul. It comes from the heart. It's about really connecting. Um, and as a result of that, I've literally sold millions of dollars of worth of, of stuff, you know, combination of my own and, and other people's wonderful services and um, programs. So I really know what I'm talking about, right? And sales doesn't have to be that yucky, gross, inauthentic thing that you're thinking of. It can be uh, connecting and and fabulous and make you have you and the other person both feel so well and really serve people. So if if that's if that's you that you're here you're here to serve and you want to actually be able to have a real business, I have a gift for you. That's a training that's called Sales Conversation Secrets: Heart Centered Sales Made Simple, and it's a um, really detailed training on like how to have that conversation, how to actually just you know, that it actually teaches one of the ways that people blow those conversations right at the beginning <laughs> and what to do instead so that you end up having a conversation that you feel really great about. So, um, and uh, Elliot, I think you, you'll put the link for that so you can download that. Uh, that's fantastic. I'm so grateful that everybody said, talk to Anne, talk to Anne, talk to Anne. <laughs> I, I learned so much just exploring your sites and whenever you show up here and there, I always pay attention because I like really smart people who care. That really yeah. uh, smart people who care are the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the world needs more <laughs> smart people who care. And I never met a healer who wasn't a smart person. I think it's prerequisite. I think so too. <laughs> Well, I want to thank everybody for listening today, and I'm excited to hear what you learned or what you discovered or what was new for you. So please go ahead, join our Facebook group, share your experience. You can also go to our site where you can either watch or listen to any episode that we've done, and be sure you download your copy of First Steps on Your Spiritual Path. And check out the special offer for the You Gotta Ask Questions set. And I want to remind everybody to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. Because nothing happens out there and everything happens within. And I look forward to being with you next time.